You love them. It gets hard sometimes because you wish that she could be like everyone else. See autism through the eyes of the real kids who live with it. Nick News, Private Worlds, Kids and Autism. Coming up next, only on Nickelodeon. This is Nick News with Linda Ellerby. Private Worlds, Kids and Autism. And now, here is Linda Ellerby. Imagine being disconnected from the world around you, not being able to make sense of some things you see, hear, smell, and touch, needing something and not being able to express yourself. These are just a few of the challenges that may be faced by kids with autism. Autism is not a mental illness. It's not a choice, and it's not contagious. It's a brain disorder that affects your ability to take in the world around you, process it, and communicate with others. Kids with autism have been described as living in their own private world. But they're also living in our world, and therein lies the challenge for all of us. It's hard to know what's going on in the minds of people with autism. Well, with my autistic sisters, you never know when they're going to get a tantrum, when they're going to be angry, when they're going to be sad, and when they're going to be happy. My brother can't talk, not very well, so he uses a board to spell out words. L-I-T-T. -T. And my sister doesn't talk like you and I talk. She just makes sounds. Out of sport, out of sport, I'm out of day. Autism means from the Greek, turn inward, basically not necessarily needing other people. I'm Dr. Ami Klin, and I direct the autism program at the Yale Child Study Center. Sometimes autistic kids flail their arms like this, or flail them like that, or move their head, just move their body, shake it. My brother, he'll spin things, like anything, a book, a DVD, a ball, like anything. He just loves to spin it. For many children with autism, the world out there is too confusing and they can look at their hands or they can flap their hands. It's almost a way of calming oneself down, making their world in a way that they can cope with it. I don't think that anyone really knows what causes autism. A lot of people I meet think that autism is like mentally retarded and things like that, and it's not at all. There's different levels of autism. There's high-functioning autism, moderate autism, severe autism. My brother personally is high-functioning, which means he's, he can control his autism. The more intellectually disabled the child is, the more likely is that child to need more help throughout their lives. Let's go, let's go. Some of the things my sister needs help with is getting dressed, like tying her shoes and things like that. I do believe that more and more children are being diagnosed with autism. The latest study says that one in 150 kids is autistic, but nobody is quite sure whether that means there are more kids with autism today or we're just better at diagnosing it. I love my sister, and um, it gets hard sometimes because you wish that she could be like everyone else. And I know a lot of people, sometimes they say things like, um, I love that person the way they are, I would never change them. But honestly, if I could change my sister, I would, just so things would be easier on her. It's hard to comprehend what life is like for a kid with severe autism because that kid can't tell us. Andrew can't tell us. But maybe his family can help us understand Andrew's world. A B C D E F G H I J K. Hey. No, Andrew no. does have a more severe form of autism. The deal with Andrew is everything in his brain is kind of mixed up. My name is Ariana, and I'm Andrew's sister. What do you want, Bobby? I don't know what's name. Are you okay? Mm -mm -mm. Okay. Hey, come here. 
You're okay. He struggles every day with his life. Things are so much harder for him. The things we take for granted, like walking, playing with other kids, having conversations, eating lunch, all of this stuff is a challenge for okay. him. What is my nap? Well, check it out. Look. Check in the middle. Andrew, look on the, on the table, on top of the table. Look on top of the table and see if you can find a napkin. Andrew, look. Around here in the middle. There you go. This world is chaotic for Andrew. His senses get mixed up sometimes. My name is Jason and I'm Andrew's brother. All of Andrew's senses are constantly bombarded. He feels, sees, hears, t and smells everything at the same time. He can't tune any of it out. We're Poida and Bill, and we're Andrew's parents. When you're sitting in a chair as a normal person, you can engage the person you're talking to without realizing that you're sitting in the chair. You know you are, but you don't actually feel yourself in the chair. Andrew does. While he's engaged with you in the conversation, he's feeling himself in the chair, and he's noticing that there's a breeze going through his hair, and he can hear the video in the other room. He doesn't have the capability of filtering the most important thing you should be focused on, which is what normal people do. You want to go look at the videos? You want to go look at the videos, Andrew? Well, it's kind of hard when we go out in public places because Andrew will get really agitated. Maybe start sprinting down the aisle of, like, shopping center or anything. Um, just screaming, grabbing stuff off the aisles. People look at us, and at the beginning, it was really uncomfortable just being stared at. It was actually a little bit embarrassing. But now I've gotten used to it. Well, I remember when my two older children were maybe six and four, they asked me, Mom, when is Andrew going to get better? That was the day that I had to tell them that Andrew's never going to get better. He's never going to get completely better. He won't recover from autism, but we're going to do everything we can to make him the best that he can be. He'll never have a normal life, and he is in his own little world. But with therapy, we're trying to bring him into our world. We work to help Andrew's brain get better, and we do that by taking everything that a normal child his age does and try to help him do the same type of stuff. Nine, ten, good job! My name is Hulisa, and I'm one of Andrew's home therapists. I have some math work for you. I need to get a pen. In some things, Andrew is very smart. I mean, when he sits down to do math, he can figure it out. I finished my work. You did? Let me check that out. There are pieces of his brain that weren't hurt by autism. 96 is more than pretty free. That's right. High five. Good job. Our job is to figure out what pieces need to be worked on and help him put it all together. Andrew, he does something called stimming, which is basically self-stimulation. He flaps his hands, he spins in circles. He starts saying things with his mouth that don't make sense to anybody else. And he starts doing things with his body that seem a little weird. Like blinking your eyes really fast, shaking your head. And it's just his way of saying, I don't know what to do, it's too much for me. Squish! Sometimes the way we calm him down is by getting a pillow and putting it over his body and just squeezing down on him. And for him, it, it kind of has a calming effect. Andrew loves puzzles, and that's kind of ironic because autism is definitely like a puzzle in terms of how Andrew perceives the world. I'm definitely seeing progress with Andrew every day. There's no cure but we're doing everything that we can, helping him have fun and just enjoy life as he has it. We have had such hope for him and such expectations, and we never give up. He's never given up, so it would just be so unfair for the rest of us to give up on him. Having an autistic brother has been both interesting and challenging, but when life hands you lemons, you make lemonade. That's what our family's been trying to do. Asperger syndrome is generally considered to be a milder form of autism. Some kids with Asperger's may have a higher than average IQ, 
but when it comes to socializing, they still have trouble fitting in. My name is Bond and I have Asperger's Syndrome. My brain is wired differently than a person without Asperger's Syndrome. Most other kids already know how to socialize well with other people, but people with Asperger's Syndrome, it takes time to learn how to interact with other people in terms of conversations. I care more about my schoolwork than uh, typical people care. Typical people care about other things like being able to spend time with their friends. Normally at lunch, I uh, just uh, eat my lunch, and uh, after I'm done eating my lunch, I like to work on my homework. I've never really been interested in uh, riding a bike or be playing sports, and sometimes I like to zone out a lot. I like to be in my own world, think about my own stuff, which can be a problem when I'm out in public or when I'm walking across the street. Bond will space out and not realize that there may be a car coming back and forth, so every day after school, I always walk home with him. I'm Blaze, I'm Bond's brother. He has a really hard time getting along with people he doesn't know, starting conversations and stuff like that. But he gets better grades than I do. <laughs> but to get those good grades, Bond needs help focusing and interacting with his teachers and other kids. So he has an aide who works with him throughout the school day. One of the things I have to work with with Bond is patience and waiting and waiting his turn and letting people finish their thoughts before jumping in. My name is Heather and I work with Bond at school. One dominant recessive. Okay. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I She's it. done a lot to help me over the years as we've been together. For number three. Yeah. Did you understand? You're really taking over the group, don't you think? Like when I'm in a group, I need to make sure that I'm not being bossy with everyone and just telling them what to do instead of discussing it with them. You know what I mean? A lot of kids are bossy, but kids with Asperger's, for Bond at least, he doesn't understand that he's being bossy. I thought all we needed to go over was the Geno and Fino test. Yeah. He doesn't want to hurt your feelings. Asperger's causes me to overreact to things that shouldn't be that big of a problem. There were times when I was frustrated, I'd like uh, hit myself on the head or more like bump into people and run into people in the hallways, uh, just uh, slam doors. May I go to the water fountain to get a drink? Sure. As the years went on, I've been learning to deal with anger and frustration by doing things such as taking deep breaths, going to the water fountain to get a drink. <sighs> Last year, I saw a lot of frustration and a lot of anger and a lot of calling out and not waiting. Uh, this year, the only thing that we're having a lot of problems with is self-talk and not realizing that people are around him when he's talking to himself. I'm not around. You know what? I was in the dream bed. I was in the dream bed. I was in the He just talks to himself, moves his mouth, smiles, laughs, and he needs somebody to say, Bond, you're talking to yourself. He can't get out of that self-talk. When you have Asperger's syndrome, there are things you can do in the privacy of your home, but things that you can't do in public. <laughs> you have to realize it is a disability, like any other disability out there. And he might do something kind of weird or silly, and they'll just be like, whoa, that kid's weird, and then make fun of him and not even realize that he has a disability. But, like, that's the whole reason that people need to understand what Asperger's is. How have you been doing this week? It's been very busy this week. One of the things I'm doing to help me learn how to socialize is volunteering at a local library. I'm trying to learn the skills I would need to be able to interact with other people in a workplace. Great. See you next week. Bye. Goodbye. I want people to understand that uh, if a person with Asperger's syndrome uh, says anything in a harsh tone of voice that they don't mean it to sound like sound that way. And I want people to respect the fact that I might be different from them in some ways, and that's okay. Some autistic kids possess extraordinary gifts, sometimes in art or math. This is called savant syndrome. It's rare, but it happens. I started playing piano at the age of six and a half, 
and uh, I started jazz a year later. My name is Matt, and I'm 14 years old. The autism gives him an ability to understand the structure of music. He doesn't have to think about what note comes next. His autism allows him to do that. My name's Larry, and I'm Matt's father. The music has helped him basically come out of his shell, and he learned to relate to people through music, uh, and people relate to him through his music. Matt still struggles with some of his um, autism symptoms, uh, like when he's signing CDs after a show. Oftentimes, many people will be talking to him at once, but he can really only focus on one person at a time. Matt's music abilities are really quite amazing. It's not typical in children with autism. It's just a special case. Well, I know that there's a gift inside me, and I think it's sort of, it comes from the brain and goes right to my hands. I don't really even think about it much when I play. I don't even think about anything really much when I play music. It's just what comes from me. understanding of autism has come a long way in a short time. When Temple Grandin was a little girl, there wasn't even a word for autism, but it existed. When I was two and a half years old, I had the full-blown autistic symptoms. I had no language. I would rock. I had constant tantrums. I would just sit and dribble sand through my hands, I would, and I had no uh, social contact with other people. It was 1949, and the doctors didn't know what autism was in 1949, so I was just labeled as brain damaged. My name is Temple Grandin. I'm professor of animal science at Colorado State University. I've devoted a great amount of my time to um, explaining to people how the autistic mind works. I've written books. I've written magazine articles. I do at least, you know, 25 conferences a year. Fortunately, my mother got some very good medical advice from a doctor in Boston who recommended a speech therapy school. And my mother also hired a nanny who spent hours playing turn-taking games with me and my sister. So the therapy I got as a young child was as good as the therapies that we have today. I started uh, improving, and I got my language by the time I was four. I was mainstreamed into a normal school with small classes. High school middle school the worst part of my life i was the nerd kind of kid that the other kids just tortured and teased i'd walk across the parking lot when i was in high school kids would go tape recorder and they said that because i always would just talk about the same thing over and over again and i would say certain phrases just like coming out from a tape recorder and i can laugh about it now but at the time it really hurt one thing i'm really concerned about are kids like me. The smart kids, kind of the nerdy, odd kids getting teased in school. Don't tease these people, help them. Autistic kids need a friend. I'm Stephanie and I'm a junior coach for Special Hockey International. Special Hockey International is a group of special needs kids who just get together and play hockey. The big majority of the kids are autistic. Nice and easy, okay? You're just gonna push nice and easy, see? I am a coach and I work with the kids one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, just like that, good job. I do this because I've seen how hard it is for my brother, Michael, who is autistic. Michael has had it very rough because the teasing was so horrible. They would say, oh, Mike, come here, look at this. So he would sit up at lunchtime and then they would stick pizza under his seat, so he would sit down in the pizza. And there was one point where he just got up and cried and said, Mommy, don't make me go to school. Hey, Chandler. Hey. I wanted to do this so the autistic kids can come and have a place where they don't get teased and where they can have friends. Here in Special Hockey, they never even teased me at all. My name is Chandler. I've been in Special Hockey for four years. Well, special hockey is one of the greatest places um, to make new friends out there. 
Chandler, he's a great kid. Chandler's autistic. He can't really focus for long amounts of time, but he, you know, can talk in complete sentences. He can function more or less like a neurotypical person. When he first came to the team, I think he was a little bit shy. Now he's outgoing and loves to go fast. When I'm skiing, I feel like I'm flying like a bird. I think that hockey should be for everyone. My name is Ben, and I'm a junior coach for special hockey. Autistic kids in this program get a lot out of it. They get friends, relationships, they get experiences where they can have fun. The program is definitely a safe place for them. They come here and they skate and they, they're part of a team. People without autism and people with, with autism can be friends and they can be the same. It's just that you might have to adapt the way that you think to be friends with them. Hockey is definitely a way that typical kids and special needs kids can interact with each other and connect with each other, and it's a great thing. You don't have to be autistic to be different. Each of us is different visibly and in other ways. I mean, no two faces are the same, so why should any two brains be the same? The trick is learning how to be different together. By the way, how are you different? I'm Linda Ellerby. Goodbye for Nick News. And for more information, go to nicknews.com. on keyboard. He's Hamilton Hawks. He tickles those ivories and the whole rocks. Oh, yeah, yeah. Rock on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, go, kid. We're rocking those blues. Oh, yeah, we're rocking those blues. like somebody, or should I say some birdie, is playing a drum. Wow, Z, you're quite the percussive prodigy, a masterful musician, a brilliant bongo birdie. In other words, you're pretty good. Let me give it a try. Stupendous. Would you like to play along too? After Z drums the rhythm, you play the same. Why don't you clap along, like me? It's music to my antlers. Even better. Whew. I simply love the sound of everyone playing together. You know what else I love the sound of? Saying, Miss Spider's Sunny Patch Friends is coming up soon.
it's time to move to the music on Noggin. I was wearing my old shoes. But now I got on my new shoes now. And yes, I feel like dancing, I feel like dancing. was wearing my old clothes but I got on my new clothes now and yes I feel like dancing I feel like dancing everybody dance Thinking my old thoughts. But Lord, I'm thinking some new thoughts now. And I feel like dancing, I feel like dancing. to save them. I would swim into the water and then I would spin around the well and the, um, <laughs> the well would say, whee! And then the Wonder Pets would swim out. Save the Wonder Pets, Monday, April 23rd at 11 on Vic Jr. This is serious. Hey, that's my line. Here's one budding artist's cozy little creation. All this month, Noggin is celebrating with drawings that show how splendidly spring has sprung. Your preschooler can make more masterpieces with the doodle pad at DailyNoggin.com. 